He doesn't get it, does he? Did Prince Harry really believe that the royal family would forgive and forget the moment he offered to help out in his dad's hour of need? As if hurling hurtful grenades at King Charles and his beleaguered clan for three painful years never really mattered. Harry magnanimously informs them he is available for a sensational return to frontline duties. Only temporarily, mind, nothing permanent. But while his father is off sick fighting cancer, the deluded Duke of Sussex has let it be known that he is prepared to cut a few ribbons, unveil plaques, plant memorial trees, and do all the other mundane stuff he ran away from. Gee, thanks, Harry. Mighty big of you. If the ginger winger is surprised that his oh-so-generous gesture was swiftly and unceremoniously rejected, he must be just about the only person who is. Because thanks to his racism lies in that disgraceful interview with Oprah, his spiteful little ghost-written book Spare, and his nasty Netflix series accusing Brits of slave driving, this gormless guy has burnt his bridges and it's unlikely they will ever be repaired. Clearly, William has concluded that his treacherous brother sold his own family down the river for cash and never wants to speak to him again. The king, we learn, is in more of a conciliatory mood and would love nothing more than peace to break out among his warring relatives. But even Charles has drawn the line at Harry re-entering the palace fold, telling aides that there is no longer any way back for his wrecking ball of a younger son. Meanwhile, Queen Camilla remains furious over Harry's horrible contention that she is the villain of the story, and Kate, Princess of Wales, isn't ready to put behind her all the anguish she suffered amid a torrent of damaging allegations emanating from Camp Meghan. So, it's only Harry, and by extension his American wife, who doesn't seem to comprehend the magnitude of his crimes against his British loved ones. Uh, why can't the dozy Duke get it through his thick head that the rift he and Meghan opened up makes the Grand Canyon look like a crack in the pavement? Has hapless Harry really convinced himself that one day everyone will be prepared to put the bitter battleground he created down to experience? Astonishingly, it looks as if he has, which goes to prove what is uncomfortably clear about this pampered and privileged prince. He's wired up differently. As a middle-aged bloke, a 39-year-old father of two, he should have worked out the profound nature of the heartache he has caused among the people who used to be his nearest and dearest. But he hasn't. Maybe he will when he grows up. Uh, well, you're the royal expert, uh, Daisy. What did you think of my thoughts there? Well, I think you should come off the fence, Kevin, and tell, <laughs> and tell us what you really think. Yeah, I kind about, of uh, hedge my bets. About, about, I, about yeah. Harry and Meghan. I mean, I think fundamentally you're right in that the problem is with William. It's not with Charles necessarily. I yeah. think Charles, as most 75-year-olds with cancer, would want to see you know, your kids kiss and make up. You'd want yeah, yeah, to build yeah. those bridges and so on. So I think it's really sad. But I think William is the one that's saying, you know, seriously, you can do one, Harry. Yeah, William uh, is, is furious. And even Charles, we understand, JJ, has let it be known that although he wants a relationship with Harry, and he would love Harry and William to make up, but he knows they're not going to, but he's let it be known that because of everything Harry's done, he can't come back to royal duties. He can't come back to the royal fold that easily. Yeah, well, let's be. Let's remember that it's William who attacked. Harry. Oh, you're going to go on about that fight <laughs> yes. again, are you? Yeah. You've got to grow yeah. up. You've got to move on from William, William Punch Up. William Brothers punch have punched up. He nearly up. broke his jaw. He knocked him into a dog bowl. It could have been a very serious accident. But Shame he didn't. Let's never think <laughs> oh, how, how much of a bully William is. Um, but as for Charles, I, I don't believe these rumours that Charles is saying uh, how he can ever return to fold. I think if Harry said to Charles tomorrow, Pa, papa, I wish to come back and I'll do whatever it takes. I think Charles would say, yeah, OK, my dear boy. Well, OK, but he... he <laughs> very good. Do you very good. disagree? Well, yeah. although, well, although he calls him Pops. Pops? Yeah. Oh, OK. Calls, yeah, no, calls he doesn't call him <laughs> my dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love your little royal impression there. <laughs> Behind closed doors at the front. <laughs> oh, you're just my dear boy. <laughs> um, but uh, as I say, I think... Personally, Charles is ready to forgive and forget. And that's because he, 
Charles, I always find Charles to be very weak and, you know, spineless. But it, but I think he's a very nice guy. I, I think, think he's a nice boy. I, I think you're right. I think he's very sentimental. Yeah. You know, we know from you know, from all the stories we, we've heard about yeah. Charles over the last 70 years, yeah. he is somebody who wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. He is emotional. He is sensitive. Yeah. I mean, you go back to whether, you know, the hugging trees and all that. You know, this this is a man Weirdo. who likes... <laughs> you know, <laughs> actually, he was, he was ahead of his time. But, you know, this is a man who does wear his heart on his sleeve, who is emotional, you know, who, who likes to, you know, to talk about his feelings and so on, very unlike most of the other royals. And I think, therefore, he will have found it really hard yeah. having you know, this horrible, broken relationship yeah. with it, Harry. I think William is a very different kettle yeah. of fish. William, William is a much tougher... He is a tough guy, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, Charles, uh, it is well known, and I don't blame him for this, I don't like it much myself, he hates confrontation. He doesn't like this kind of this raw. You don't image. like confrontation. <laughs> wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hang on! A <laughs> yeah, that's, that is absolutely. When I say I hate confrontation, that's a lie. Yes, you make your living out of confrontation. <laughs> that that is uh, true, uh, but. Um, the, the, I don't see this uh, situation thawing out anytime soon. And, and it, as I say, it said in my monologue, I kind of find it surprising that, you know, oh, I've just seen you've got a staff shortage because of William and Kate. Oh, I'll come back and help out. I mean, did, did he, he say that? Well, he's let he, him, he, he has he let that? that be known. He has yeah. let that be known. Look, uh, I mean, does he really think they're going, oh, yeah, yeah, well, forget about everything. Well, yeah, that's I'll tell fine. You, I'll tell you why he may think that, if he does. I don't think he does think that. But if he does think that, maybe it's because his uncle was best friends with an and he was happy to walk around with, with this pedophile guy and that was all okay. And now Charles is still protecting Andrew, who is not guilty of anything. He yeah. just paid a few million pounds to a woman he's never met. If that's okay, why can't Harry, who has yeah. he's, he's had an argument with his family publicly, why can't he now come back to the fold? Yeah. I uh, would like well, to <laughs> By the way, by I the, would way, like the, to the say... producer is just asking me in my ear, can we say well, he just did. Uh, so you might get a lot of bleeps uh, when this show comes out. But he's talking about Jeffrey Epstein, of course, who was a convicted paedophile. Uh, and best and, mates uh, with, Yes, with I mean, you, you know, I have a go at Harry a lot, but uh, trust me, uh, if I had to go yeah. for a beer with someone and I had to choose between Harry and Andy, <laughs> Andy can <laughs> Off. <laughs> I'm going for a drink with Harry. I think, I think a lot of people though would like to see Harry sort of standing on a you know wet Wigan on a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. Like, you know, sort of doing some of those royal duties, you know, <laughs> cutting a ribbon and talking to Mrs. Miggins. I think some people would think that fair enough. I think if Harry had just started doing a few sort of duties rather than talking about or well, having his mates talking about it that actually might have been a better way around yeah. said you know how can i help is there something i can do yeah. but i think he has sent that olive branch out i think he has clearly said look if i can help out and i, and I quite like him for that in a way but he's been summarily rejected now my uh, american uh, viewers our american viewers in fact mm. they want to know jj uh, why you're such a <laughs> no, sorry, no, it doesn't say that here. They want to know... <laughs> How long have you got? How long have you got? How long have exactly. you got? <laughs> uh, no, they want to know why you obsessively defend Harry and Meghan. We, we, we literally have someone living in royal grounds who, was, who admitted to being friends with a known pedophile. After the person was convicted of being a pedophile, he still made the effort to go and hang out with him at his place. We as taxpayers are still having that person associated with our royal family. Harry has not done anything yeah. near as bad as that. Andrew has taken <laughs> Dick Hedery to a whole new level. He is not... Yeah. But, of course, one of the problems we know with families, particularly, you know, with blood being thicker than water and all that, is that if a member of your family attacks or slags off you or another member of your family, you take that much worse than these, you know, obviously much, much worse crimes of association that Andrew's done. But because Harry has attacked the royal family, I think that's the thing they can't get beyond. You know, they're meant to stick together. They're meant to be loyal to each other. So you can see why they've got themselves mm. in this tangle where they've all closed ranks on Harry and said, I'm really sorry, but what you've done is unforgivable. You know, Andrew's little local difficulty because because he's remained little loyal local. because he's remained loyal to the rest of us. We can somehow look he's past it. So, yeah. you know, so, so it's a bit like Harry going, well, "What about Andrew? Yeah. Oh, we already weren't talking to him." <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, it's time now for a bad ad. Hi, I'm Joe Gray with the Gojo Hands Free, the only device on Earth that's truly hands free. 
These things are not hands-free. You stick them in your ears, gross, but you still have to hold your phone. And it can take up to 60 seconds to put these in. And these are not legal for hands-free driving. The Gojo goes on in one second. Hello, one Mississippi. Hey mom, I can't talk right now. Only the Gojo has both hands free. No batteries, no wires. It makes your phone the hands-free device. It's true hands-free. This is like, like perfect. Freaking awesome. And it works with all phones. Stick the high density suction cup to the back of any phone. Flip phones, cordless phones, even landlines. And pop it off. Or you could put it on speaker. <laughs> but it's not hands-free then. Uh, it's not you're, hands you're still holding it. I suppose it. so, yeah. yeah. That's so actually that not clamps a to your head. I actually quite like this one for the change. Oh, do you? Yeah, this is good. That's yeah. good. I'd how much? That. I'm, I didn't notice how much it was. I didn't see a price. What is it? Usually forty nine ninety nine. Forty nine ninety five. Three thousand and ninety nine ninety nine. It was when he did it with the landline. Yeah. That, that he lost me. <laughs> anyway, you know those landlines that you know are, are sort of uh, wireless and yeah. they're like that big. Yeah. So you can imagine it's stuck to your head. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anyway, shut up. Now it's time for mean <laughs> tweets about you. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't get these before I started working with you. It's, yeah, I know. It's, I know. It's, 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 my, my, my natural unpopularity yeah. is infectious. <laughs> it's like uh, Andrew and Epstein all over again. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Are you sure that they're not from Kevin? Yeah. Kevin, you make my week sparring with JJ a breath of fresh air. I wouldn't call it sparring. Yeah. You, you just, just rap and I, I name facts. Yeah, no, uh, no, it's me insulting. <laughs> yeah, while, while you spew a whole <laughs> line of. <laughs> the last one. Um, JJ needs to get to the nearest mirror, take that jacket off and be honest with himself. I do believe he has had a few too many corn dogs himself. <gasps> and they're calling me fat! <laughs> they are they're calling me fat! fat. Oh, look at me. Yeah, why don't they have corn dogs in Britain? I love yeah. corn dogs, they're really great. <laughs> Shut up, fat <laughs> All Right, so it's time to go to a real break. <laughs> Mad as hell, it's Kevin O'Sullivan. Ah, welcome back. I am still with the great Daisy McAndrew and the not so great JJ <laughs> Anasiobi, who hates America and <laughs> Americans. Uh, so I've written a monologue about America just for you. <laughs> great. Uh, those Democrats, eh? They thought for a while that the only way to win the presidential election was to make sure that old fossil Joe Biden was up against Donald Trump. Everybody hates the Donald, right? Wrong. Washington Democrats do. But that's because they suffer from TDS, Trump derangement syndrome, the main tenet of which is to detest the guy so much that you become utterly blind to his popular appeal. So Codger Joe's apostles were thrilled as it emerged that there was only one serious contender in the Republican race, Donald John Trump Jr., until doo, it dawned on them that not only was Donald a dead cert to get the GOP nomination, but also that he was likely to annihilate doddery 81-year-old Biden come the count in November. Next move, organise a blizzard of indictments to undermine the orange man who would be president for the second time. As a result, Trump faces a staggering 91 felony charges, but once again, a collective duel from the dozy Democrats as each new legal grenade only served to bolster Trump's ratings. Biden's bozos weren't wrecking Donald's chances, they were improving them. When he was indicted in Georgia on allegations of racketeering, he turned his famous mugshot into a marketing money spinner, flogging mugshot mugs, t-shirts and baseball caps for many millions of dollars. Colorado will probably lose its bid to keep Trump off the ballot. Surely the Supreme Court is never going to uphold such a blatant affront to democracy. Ditto Maine, where they seem to believe that people they don't like should not be allowed to run for president. This is America, folks. It doesn't go like that. And by far the biggest ace in Donald's pack is Ancient Joe's alarming mental decline. In just one woeful gaff-ridden week, 
Joke, Joe confused current French leader Macron with the long-dead Mitterrand, former German Chancellor Angela Merkel with the late Helmut Kohl, and worst of all, Egypt with Mexico. In an excruciating White House press conference, he went on to forget the name of Hamas, but did, for once, manage to stay upright. With this keystone cop clown of a president, it is hard to take the USA seriously. And if Biden remains the candidate, in the blue corner, even those who despise Trump will vote for him because at least he's got his marbles. Who wants a diminishing old fella like this in the Oval Office? Americans don't because they're not stupid. If he stands, Trump wins. It's as simple as that. Would you agree? That Americans are stupid? No. <laughs> no, I would, I, I would agree with a lot of that, but I particularly want to commend you on the use of the word doolally. Yeah. It's one of my favorite. Do you know where the word doolally comes from? Oh, yeah, go no. on. It was originally um, uh, a mental health institute in India. It was the name of the... Uh, the okay. yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. It's kind of uh, not very nice, is it? But uh, interesting Means you're insane. There so, you go. I, yeah. I divert you from See, American politics show, to, it, to Indian <laughs> words. This show is not only mad and full of mayhem, it's also very informative. So. And, and quite doolally. But, but, but the, I do... Feel, I know this from people in America, that basically... Uh, the, what they're doing, they're quantifying Trump yeah. and just saying, well, he has got his uh, faculties and even his policies, if you take away the sort of slightly garish quality that he has, if you t his policies, you know, are quite appealing to many Americans. But, yeah. as I say, the Democrats, if they put up old uh, senile Joe as their candidate, Trump will beat him. It's as simple yeah. as no, that. No, no, I, th I, I do think you're right about that. And I... I think a lot of people, whether you're pro-Trump you know, or, or anti-Trump, whatever, do think that that is no way to run a democracy, to have a candidate who's clearly not up to the job. And just this week, it's been revealed that he's spending 20% of his time away from the White yeah. House in Delaware, yeah. which, to me, is a bit fishy. So, yeah. you know, why does he have to be away from the White House yeah. so much? Is it because he simply can't cope and has to, you know, the sort of... The ladies, you know, in the nice nurses' outfits, have come to look after him for a few hours to yeah. stop him saying I, something stupid. I think I think it's this. I think it's the Democrats don't want him in the White House. <laughs> the more he's out of the way, the better it is for them. But I mean, you know, well, if, you, if you look at if you look at footage of Biden when he became president. He was a lot sharper than he is now. Oh, yeah. He is in the midst of a very steep mental decline. Yeah, well, he's had more holidays than any other president so far um, in, in, the, in the 20th century. But how have we got to this point that these two old, old, old men... Trump is not much younger yeah, than Yeah, 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 but, right? but this is a we, we, cheap... This is a, the Democrats are say, oh, he's nearly as old as Joe. Well, you can be 95 and have all your marbles. But should, yeah, but, but should, Biden doesn't. But uh, we need, Trump does. We need younger people in charge. Well, that's, that's as maybe. I'll yeah. take we, that we, point. We've gone from Obama, who could pick up a basketball and shoot a three-pointer uh, walking out of a gym. Bush, who would go and join the army boys and do yeah. um, yeah. push-ups with the Marines, to now two old men who are... But they're, yeah. they're both old men. Neither of them should be running to be in charge of the, the nuclear button that's going to destroy the by world. By the way, talking of lazy presidents, uh, when uh, Obama was president, what was the cry around the White House constantly? Where's the president? <laughs> On the golf course. He was <laughs> always playing golf. But you know what Obama did do? He deported people. He, he the, the, the deporter in chief. He, he deported more people, more illegal immigrants from the US than than Trump did, yeah. also, more than Biden did. Also, Bush was famously on the golf course when he was asked about a terrorist attack. And oh yeah, they, they, watch they, the swing. They, 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 what, what, <laughs> yeah. Watch this swing. So yeah, they're all <laughs> quite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're all quite inappropriate. Also, Kevin, keep your left arm straight. <laughs> I, I do have to pick you up one thing because if falling over on the job is a sign that you shouldn't Ooh. be on the job, <laughs> then yeah. you've got something to admit. I can't believe you mentioned I it. I should tell the audience. <laughs> just before this show started in what we call the green room, you know, that's where in proper television companies you get drinks and things like that. Here you get cups of coffee. Uh, anyway, I uh, put my bag down and then fell over it rather badly. <laughs> Like a clown. A bit like Joe Biden, come to think of it. You did, did a proper... <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go at poor old Joe because he keeps falling over. Who am I to f***ing talk? Did, Seriously. You did a proper, proper arse over tit, as we call arse it. Arse over this, tit, that's what it was. That that's of the what pond. it was. But it's is strange how much the Democrats hate Donald Trump. And the, the groups who... Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah, and the groups, there's groups of people, like black voters, like um, American Mexican voters, who still support Donald Trump. I and, and, they, and the Democrats hate the fact that these minority groups and women, Trump, people who yeah. should not Trump, be Trump hating. is brilliant at appealing to blue-collar America. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, 
but what they, uh, these Democrats can't get through their head, they are so blinded by their hatred of yeah. Trump that they just can't understand that anybody would possibly like him. Yeah. So they go, so their plan was, let's try and get Donald to stand against Joe, because then Joe will win. Uh-uh, don't mm. think so. Also, when it comes to not understanding, there's an awful lot that we don't really understand about American politics. Like, people are really shocked that Trump has got the religious right completely sewn up, that, you know, that, that they totally support him. And, of course, people are like, but this is the man that was talking about grabbing... This is the man who is really inappropriate. This is the man Sorry. who doesn't seem just to like, have morals. I just like hearing Daisy say the word <laughs> I'm <laughs> quoting. It's allowed when you're quoting. I, I'm, I'm pro <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can keep that. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Trump does appeal to uh, blue-collar America extremely yeah. well, doesn't he? And, uh, you know, they're worried about the same kind of things that British people are worried. They're worried about immigration. Mm -hmm. They're worried about the cost of living. They're very worried about the amount of money uh, Biden Gives is to trying Ukraine. to give to yeah. Ukraine and so on and so forth. Uh, as, as I said to you before, they are a very uh, intelligent, engaged electorate, far more than ours. Even with everything I know about Trump and his father and his grandfather, I've read all the, all the biographies, I, I still would rather have him as the US president than Joe Biden. Hey, there you go. But me that, too, but, me too. But, yeah. but that depends if you're looking at that from the point of view of the rest of the world or from the point of view of an American. Now, of course, an American voter is going to be voting you know, for you know, the point of view of the United States. For us, you know, Trump pulling out of NATO, Trump pulling out of Ukraine. I think that's a good thing Ukraine. to pull out of NATO. I think it's a good thing. I think NATO is a... Like, we had this discussion before and we argued yeah. about it. I think NATO is a protection racket for the USA to expand themselves across the world and plant their soldiers. What a their load of <laughs> Like NATO. Thanks very and much. Trump agrees with me. Yeah, well, he doesn't. No, he you're doesn't. right. Yeah, he does. He Trump doesn't. wants out of NATO because yeah, everyone's not paying I their can't, bills. I can't, I, I can't help USA. loving Trump. Every time he's on the <laughs> telly, I, I just... He's just the greatest story ever. Yeah. When he became president, uh, it was the greatest story ever. If he does it again, it'll be even greater. Yeah. Uh, it's time <laughs> now for a bad ad. The fresh maker. Over the top of it, <laughs> a pack of the mints. What? Also, I couldn't quite see how is he getting them in his mouth. I know, right? He's, it's a, he it almost sucks it out. So, so the narrative of that ad. If I, oh my god. The narrative of that ad, if I got it right, he accidentally gets one line on his suit and then rolls around. <laughs> yeah. To get loads pin, of pin lines. Pinstripe right? suit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, Fashion, go. mate. Well, go. <laughs> what would you know about that? <laughs> uh, I've got to get myself a packet of Mentos. In the meantime, uh, thank you very much to JJ and the COB, uh, who hates America, and therefore we hate him. <laughs> and to the great Daisy McAndrew. Thanks very much, Daisy. It was a pleasure to see you. I've been Kevin O'Sullivan. You've been an amazing audience. This has been another incredible episode. And what just happened? We'll be back, same time, same place, right here on Talk TV next Friday. Bye! What just happened?